Hello and welcome to I Wish I'd Known That Earlier, the Grads Eye View Library Edition. This is an orientation module that's created for new graduate students joining SFU. Um, and we're gonna introduce you to the services that are available through the SFU Library Research Commons for graduate students. Before we do get started, I wanna acknowledge that SFU's campuses and SFU's campus libraries are located on the unceded traditional and current territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Coquitlam, Katsi First Nations. So this is a kind of unconventional format for us, but we do want to also uh, introduce ourselves, even though you can only uh, hear us today and you're not actually able to see us in person. Uh, so my name is Ali Moore. I'm the assistant head of the SFU Library Research Commons. Uh, I joined SFU Library in 2015, so, and I graduated with my MLIS from McGill in 2015 as well. So uh, I have definitely had the grad school experience and it's uh, pretty, pretty recent in memory. That's over to Robin. Hi, um, thanks for watching today. I'm Robin Long. I'm the Writing Services Coordinator for Graduate Students. Um, I've been working at the SFU Library helping people with their academic writing since 2013. Um, I was a graduate student uh, for most of my time at SFU. I uh, finished my dissertation in 2017. So that's to say that um, both Ali and I have been through the grad school experience and um, that's one of the reasons that um, we are really good at helping you through all of your research needs. Thanks. All right, so the whole point of this um, sort of orientation module is to really provide you with an overview of the services that you can get access to um, so that you don't have that kind of experience that we, we know many students do, which is to say that at the end of your degree, you kind of come back and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish I'd known earlier that I could get help with, you know, any step of your, your research, your writing and your publishing. So really we wanna emphasize that there's supports available for you every step of the way uh, no matter what discipline you're in, we're really happy to help you. We help folks who are doing master's degrees, uh, doctoral programs, if you're in a certificate program, any sort of postgraduate work that's happening at SFU, we're really happy to help you with. You can send us an email at any time to that email address that's right there. It's research-commons at sfu.ca. Uh, that goes to our whole team, so you don't have to necessarily know who exactly you want to talk to, or what kind of support you need, you can send your question in and then we'll be able to refer you to the expert. Um, so just please know, um, you know, there's so much support here for you and you can really take advantage of it um, while you're with us. All right, so, and as we've, we've kind of alluded and as you maybe are understanding from this sort of strange online format, um, usually we'd be welcoming you into the space. Uh, we do have, you know, quite a nice graduate space on the, the seventh floor of the Bennett Library, but this year we're, we're going to focus kind of on the things that you can access from home. So know that, um, you know, at SFU Library, you have access to all of our collections, all of our electronic collections, just by inputting your SFU computing ID and passwords. You'll go through our authentication process that will give you access to many different databases, journals, resources that have really been purchased to support your um, research needs, um, instruction needs, any other sort of um, work that you're doing with us. Um, we do have a couple processes set up so that you can get access to physical materials, understanding that you might need books um, or other items to do your research. So uh, you can place a hold on a physical item and you can come collect that book. So we do have sort of a, a self-service holds pickup service. Um, if you only need a book chapter, we're actually trying to set up to scan it and email it to you. So uh, you know, if you discover just a chapter that you're interested in, you can kind of explore that service. And then we're always interested in making sure that we can get you the resources that you need. So if there's something that you are aware of, you've come across while searching, uh, that we actually don't have in our collections, you can request it through interlibrary loan. Uh, and we'll explore um, our options for bringing it to you from other university libraries and other libraries across the country. So we're really here to get you the, the resources that you need to do your research um, and your coursework and anything else that you're working through. So please, if there's something that, that you need, do reach out um, and any library staff member will be really happy uh, to help connect you with the resources that you need. 
All right, so the help does not uh, end at getting you sort of research materials. There are so many different experts um, in the library that are here to help you with your research, with your coursework, with your teaching, any of the sorts of things that you're working on. So the first folks that I want to uh, introduce you to are your liaison librarians. So every uh, department or faculty has a liaison librarian expert. This is someone who is familiar with the research that's happening um, in that particular area. They're the ones who purchase the books for those subject areas. They can sit down and help you if you're doing um, a literature search and you're wanting to make sure that you're kind of capturing um, the, the sum total of all the literature that's out there on a particular topic. They can help you refine your keywords, suggest good places to get started on your work, and they can also be sort of a confidential sounding board. Um, if you're sort of exploring your research question, you're looking for some help, somebody who's not necessarily um, in your department and you're, you're wanting to just have sort of a, a confidential conversation with someone about your research, it can be a really great person to sit down with uh, for a few minutes, um, up to half an hour, something like that. Uh, and they're offering support over Zoom. So you can always uh, meet with them over video conference right now. Similarly, liaison librarians create um, subject guides for each of their areas. So if you're just getting started in an area or you're potentially um, exploring an interdisciplinary topic and, and kind of getting started in some, an area that you're not as familiar with, you can check out our subject guides. Um, and these are really wonderful places where we put together kind of the top hits or the sort of suggested places to get started on any particular research area. Other things to be aware of is we've created guides on current awareness tools. So as graduate students, you're sort of expected to be um, aware of all of the new research that's coming out in your area. And one of the ways that we recommend that you do this is setting up something like a search alert or a table of contents alert for journals that are um, of real particular interest to you so that you're notified when those things come out. You don't have to do the work of finding them each time. You can kind of delegate work to the internet by having it sent to your email or, or sent to an RSS feed, those sorts of things. Other things to be aware of and supports that you have access to um, at the library that you might not be as aware of are supports for research data management, knowledge mobilization, digital humanities. So these are areas uh, where we really want to support you in um, you know, saving, preserving, making your research data available um, sort of after your research is finished. They can talk to you about best practices for data storage. Uh, file management, those sorts of things, things that are, you know, not necessarily the most exciting topics, but are really important and are just going to make your research process so much more smooth uh, and your information retrieval process um, easier as well. In terms of knowledge mobilization, this is really a way to um, make sure that your research is um, being conducted kind of um, with a mind to what the broader impact of that work is going to be. So many grants are now requiring knowledge mobilization plans as part of it. So the knowledge mobilization officer at the library can help you write your knowledge mobilization plan uh, and think about opportunities for, for connecting audiences beyond um, other academics with your, your research. The Digital Humanities Innovation Lab as well it's here to support folks who are interested in creating digital projects, exploring um, new forms of scholarship. So if you're interested in that, I definitely encourage you to reach out to those folks. And we also have a graduate writing team and English as an additional language. And Robin's gonna talk about this later on in uh, the presentation, but just so that you're aware, the support in the library is not only focused on uh, research areas and sort of um, collections and library activities, there's a lot of support for writing as well within the library. All right, so one of the main sort of, uh, I wish I'd known that earlier things is uh, citation management tools. I just can't kind of emphasize enough how much more your life is gonna be improved if at the start of grad school, you get things started by using a citation management tool. So we support two at SFU libraries, Zotero and Mendeley. And these are pieces of software that are just gonna help you like cite your sources faster. They help you create a bibliography. You can kind of organize and manage everything that you're collecting, that you're reading all in one place. And then towards the end of your project, it'll be so much easier for you to create that final bibliography. So I really encourage you to uh, take a little bit of time, learn how to use one of these tools right off the start of your degree. Uh, and I think that you'll find it'll make um, your whole process just that much smoother. All right, so beyond citation management tools, we do offer 
really wide range of supports um, for software and, and, and other sorts of data analysis tools at SFU Library. So you can uh, join us for a workshop. Those are happening online. Book a virtual consultation with someone or just send in an email question. We're happy to help you that way too. Uh, for so many different types of uh, software. So we support R, Python, GIS tools, so things that if you're looking at uh, mapping, ArcGIS and QGIS. InVivo is a qualitative data analysis tool, which is great for text analysis, those sorts of things. We support Tableau, which is a, a data visualization tool, Zotero and Mendeley, and other uh, software as it kind of comes up. So thinking about in the past, we've done workshops on like WordPress and Omeka and Digital Humanities. So if there's a tool that you're interested in learning, you can send us that request. Or similarly, if there's a tool that you're an expert in, you're interested in teaching, do get in touch. Uh, we hire graduate students to help us teach these tools. And we're also always uh, welcome to, uh, interested in, in hosting workshops on them as well. So now I will turn things over to Robin. So writing as part of your research process. Um, Ali was mentioning uh, a lot of different tools that can help you with your research and um, writing is a tool of your research that will hopefully be omnipresent throughout your process. Um, for example, this diagram on the left um, is one that, you know, often people will use to conceptualize the research process. It looks very linear and tidy. Um, but you'll also notice that writing doesn't show up on it until later in the process. You know, four, it says write your research questions, and five says write your draft, as if that's the only writing that happens. But I really want to emphasize that hopefully you'll be writing um, throughout your whole research process and really probably throughout your whole um, sort of graduate student experience. Um, the writing starts at the beginning. It starts, you know, when you're choosing your topic, when you're having ideas, you're writing about those ideas, hopefully. Um, when you're collecting information, you should be writing notes and summaries and early analyses. Um, you know, you're trying to organize your information and I really agree with Ali here um, in terms of using um, a, a citation management tool like Zotero that will make your life much, much easier. Um, but at this stage, you also want to be writing about the connections between your sources that you see, any gaps that you see or problems like, like for example, the problem of uh, this punctuation that I wrote in this box. That should be a comma instead of a period after gaps. That's okay. All part of revising. It's all a circular process. And really throughout, you want to be continuing writing, drafting, revising, making final revisions, etc. So just keep this in mind that writing isn't something that happens at the end of research. It's something you really want to start thinking about um, much sooner at the very beginning. Okay, hey, some expectations of graduate writing. Um, normally during these orientation sessions, I would ask some participants what they might be expecting of writing in their graduate career. Um, but since we don't have any participants with us right now, I'm just gonna give you um, some answers. Um, this is what I would have expected and this is some things that students generally expect of writing when they start graduate school, like you'll be writing more frequently, you'll be writing longer pieces like your, uh, your thesis. For most people, um, a thesis is the longest, um, longest piece of writing they've ever created. So that's usually a new, um, a new fun challenge. Um, managing your time, um, being clear with your communication, um, dealing with feedback, getting it, uh, you know, accepting it and applying it to your work, um, academic integrity, and really reading all the time is a really big part of graduate school. Um, that's, I think that probably goes hand in hand, in hand with time management, um, but also sort of thinking critically and analytically about your sources, sort of stepping up that analytic uh, viewpoint with your reading. So, when you're thinking about what to expect, um, it's also a good time to think about possible challenges. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, you don't want to think about writing at the very end um, of your research. You want to be thinking about it earlier on. Um, so what are some of the writing challenges you've experienced in the past? Those, you know, those are, are likely to resurface. Um, and do you anticipate any new challenges as you transition into graduate writing? Um, once again, um, because um, 
we don't have you here to discuss what you might see as some of your own writing challenges, I'm just going to share with you some of the common um, challenges that graduate students come to us uh, for help with with their writing. Um, so these are just some of the most, most common issues that we talk about. Um, summarizing and paraphrasing, uh, keeping your sources organized, again, I uh, highly recommend um, Sotero or Mendeley for that. Uh, structuring longer pieces, like I said, it's probably going to be the first time you write something this length. Maybe not, but, um, you know, often is the case. Uh, being more concise, uh, English grammar, punctuation, um, doing multiple rounds of revisions. This is something that we often don't do as undergraduates. Um, a lot of our assignments as undergraduates are just sort of one and done. Um, you know, you don't get the chance to get feedback multiple times and make multiple rounds of revisions. So that's, um, it's a really great opportunity in graduate school to help you with your writing, but it's often a new process for people too. Um, knowing how to edit and proofread uh, your work. Once again, I think as undergrads, we kind of just um, shorten the revising and editing stages, I'll say. We kind of maybe skip over those and those become really, really important when you are um, sort of stepping up your ac academic writing. Um, and then managing setbacks, and you know, there's bound to be some, um, and procrastination, you know, sometimes feeling um, anxious about writing, or um, yeah, just sort of facing some of the general challenges that, that come along with writing, writing a thesis. So what strategies can you use to make progress as a graduate writer? So first consider what successful writing strategies you've used in the past. Once again, you've maybe had challenges in the past or um, you've, you've taken certain steps to um, do well in your writing assignments in the past. I mean, I assume, you know, you've all made it into graduate school, so you've done something right to get to this point. So what were you doing that was right? You maybe want to take, um, Maybe you want to take a bit of an inventory of those practices. And do you anticipate needing to adjust any of your strategies moving forward? I know, I, I know that as an undergraduate, um, which is a while ago now, I, I don't think I made, I think everything was a first draft. I think I just wrote every single paper the night before it was due. It was good and I didn't need to worry about any time management or making those revisions. Um, so that was a really big adjustment that I needed to make uh, when I got to graduate school and I started working on longer works. Like I really needed to adjust my, my time management. So that's just one example. So just, you know, take inventory of what kind of um, writing habits, writing strengths you have and think about any kind of changes you might need to make. So here's just a few, very, very few broad um, strategies that I just kind of want to plant in your head. Um, again, don't delay working on your writing. So I mentioned that this is not something that is just comes at the end of your research. Um, but, you know, even as early as, you know, your first term paper, um, maybe you already have some sort of questions that you have about writing. Um, maybe you're having some concerns, maybe you'd like to just discuss this process with someone, that's a really great time to come to us instead of waiting until maybe you have like a full draft of your thesis and then you realize that maybe, um, maybe you need some help. We will absolutely help you at that stage, but it can be a better experience for your graduate school career um, if you start working on those things earlier. Um, develop connections with peers. Um, it can be really isolating after you finish all your coursework and uh, you're now working on a thesis um, and you don't have to go to class and see those folks anymore. So it's really good to make connections with peers to talk about your writing. You don't want to be writing in a social vacuum. You know, you don't want it to just be all in your head. You want to be having conversations about your research. You want to be talking about your writing. Just get it out in the open. Uh, very similarly, communicate with your supervisor, with your professors. Um, they should be open conversations. You don't want to be talking about your writing. Um, you don't want to be sort of keeping it to yourself. You know, it's it's a discursive process. It's dialogical. So you want to be talking with uh, your peers, but also your supervisors about it. Uh, you can attend some of our writing workshops, which I highly recommend. And you can also consult one-on-one -on -one with a graduate writing facilitator. So Ali mentioned earlier that um, we hire graduate students um, to um, help facilitate um, some use of uh, various tools, and we also hire graduate writing facilitators who are graduate students in different disciplines, 
and um, their whole job, um, as is mine, is to support you at any stage of the writing process. So even as early as you're brainstorming, you're outlining, you're doing some mind mapping, we're very happy to help you there. Or you know, you're getting ready for your defense. Um, we're happy to help you at that stage too, and anywhere in the middle. We can answer your questions, um, share resources with you, and we even provide feedback on drafts. So once again, in that case, it is good to come to us um, earlier rather than later. Um, but we're very, very happy to um, help you with anything writing related. So we hope that we will um, be in touch with you at some point. And back to you, Ellie. Thanks. All right, so just jumping off from that point, um, there is a lot of support for you in finishing your thesis because as Robin said, um, we recognize that this is probably sort of the most major undertaking uh, that you've had up, up to this point. So uh, we've already kind of talked about graduate writing services, but I do want to let you know as well that there's support um, for you in formatting your thesis. So there's a thesis template that you uh, will submit your thesis in when you're kind of ready to, to get done. And I know it can be really um, daunting to think about submitting your thesis when you're just at graduate orientation, but it is one of those things that can make your life a little bit easier if you find that thesis template, start writing in it, uh, means you don't have to do a little bit of the work uh, later on to make sure that everything's kind of all up to, up to standard. Um, and we do have lots of folks here who can who can help you with that formatting process. So you can always set up um, an appointment with them uh, if that will be useful for you as well. We also have experts in the Copyright Office that are here to help you. If you have questions about including images, for example, in that thesis, um, whether or not you're allowed to reproduce them. Um, and also if uh, you're a TA and you have questions about, you know, if whether or not you're allowed to use images in your slides or how your teaching materials um, can be used sort of after you're, you're finished uh, being a TA or an RA. So a really wonderful resource that's available to you on campus as well. And then one of the most popular programs that we run usually in person is called Thesis Bootcamp. And we don't anticipate running this in person in uh, fall 2020, but you never know what could happen in the future. What we're working on right now is setting up a thesis writing group. So this will be, um, I'm trying it out for summer, calling it Summer Thesis Writing Group. This is really a way for us to kind of get graduate students together to talk through some of those questions, to really spend time writing. Um, and we're doing this sort of um, over Zoom hosted um, and, and kind of working through the details, but we do hope that you'll, you'll join us for that thesis writing group um, in the fall. All right, so another uh, step of the graduate student experience is that you're often exploring your options for publishing or sharing your research for the first time. So I do want to emphasize that there's a lot of support for you um, kind of once we get past, you know, that kind of research process, we've talked about writing, into sort of the, the final pieces of, of getting your work out there, we can help you uh, get your work published. So we are here to talk to you about finding a journal that's gonna be a good fit for your work. Um, how do you know whether or not you wanna make your work open access or not, for example. Helping you build your online research profile. So if you have a couple of publications perhaps that you're wanting to um, make visible, make sure that if someone is uh, looking at you online that they're gonna find um, all the things that you've been working on. Uh, we can support you in retaining your rights as an author, so to make sure that you're able to get credit for your work and also um, that people will be able to, you'll be able to distribute it as you'd like. We have uh, support for open access publishing, so there's an open access fund that you are eligible for as graduate students. You can have up to $2,500 for up to two articles per year, so that's $5,000 worth of support that's available to you uh, for publishing charges while you're a graduate student. Um, SFU does have an open access policy um, and there's also funder open access requirements. So we're here to help you understand those uh, different pieces of the, those different policies and how they impact your work. Um, effectively, we're asking you to make your work open um, as folks who are affiliated with SFU. Um, and we're here to kind of help you understand uh, how to do that. As I mentioned earlier, there's support for creating a digital project. So perhaps you're not publishing your work in a traditional journal, but you're exploring other options. Um, and then again, thinking about what are other ways that you can share your work. Um, so thinking about things like blogging and podcasting, and just other ways of, of getting your work out there. So a lot of support here um, as well. 
All right, so we're kind of wrapping things up. So I do uh, want to highlight the different ways that you can sort of stay on top of what's happening in the research commons. Um, so the, the number one way to do this is we will send out an email. It's about, you know, once a month. And this has, you know, a lot of information all in one place. So we have a list of all of our upcoming workshops, information about different events or programs or services. Uh, so do keep your eye out for this. Um, it's a great way when you, when you get that email, take a, take a look through and see all of the different workshops because some of them do uh, fill up quite quickly, especially if you're interested in any of those um, research programming workshops like learning to use R or anything like that. Uh, they do tend to, to get pretty uh, booked up. So if you're interested in learning that, I'd recommend that you register right away. Uh, similarly, we do have a lot of information um, on the Research Commons webpage, so you can take a look there, see information about um, consultation services, for example, that are available. We often highlight our, our upcoming events and programs there as well. And then finally, we do try and promote our uh, workshops and other events um, on the SFU Library uh, Twitter and Instagram. So if you do have either of those two um, social media accounts, we urge you to, to follow along and you can get updates things that are happening there. All right, so uh, sort of the final uh, piece from us is if you have any questions at all, really about any process, any part of your research process, if you're looking for literature, you want help with your writing, you want help publishing, please reach out to us. Um, that's our, our email address there. So it's research-commons at sfu.ca. Um, one of us will write you back um, and we will put you in touch with the person who's kind of the best fit uh, for helping you with your questions. So just know that there's a lot of support here available and we're really happy that you'll be um, at SFU in the fall. Thanks everyone. Best of luck.